Welcome back in. Welcome back in. Today, our first draft throwdown of the season. We're going to be talking about Bijan Robinson for first Saquon Barkley. One's going at the, as the RB3. The other one's going as the RB4, 8th and ninth overall. So they're about as close as you can get. And this is going to be a real decision for anybody that has a pick at the back half of the first round. And, you know, try to make this decision. So I'm going to be arguing for Bijan. Cody, you're going to be arguing for Saquon. I will do you the honors and let you pick first. What a gentleman you are. So for me, I, I'm going with Barkley here. Uh, you know, obviously I had that huge bounce back year last year. Finishes RB5 overall and points per game. Third in opportunity share, fourth in carries, sixth in targets, third in route participation, fifth in target share. I just don't see Bijan having that type of receiving usage or involvement, especially in his his rookie year. Not saying that he can't become that. Not saying that he's not a good pass catcher because he absolutely is. But I just don't see that coming from this Falcons offense as a as a rookie. I know we've all seen the clip of him, you know, in training camp making the flat footed linebacker look completely silly. But I, I, I don't think that that's something we can necessarily expect to see a ton of. And especially not to the point where somebody like Saquon Barkley, who just led the Giants in targets last year. And you might say, well, that's because they didn't have anyone there talented enough to, you know, to pe catch passes on the Giants. What's changed? Nothing has changed. That's still a very barren receiving group that might be one of the worst receiving groups in the NFL. You're basically looking at Darren Waller as the other talented pass catcher they have. That dude hasn't been able to stay on the field throughout his career. So, and it's not just the receiving game usage. Barkley was fourth in rushing yards last year, and he did that behind a line that was ranked 24th in adjusted line yards. I think that unit could definitely be improved this year. They took John Michael Schmitz in the second round to anchor that line at center. And I don't just have this like, terrible like gut-wrenching fear with Bijan that like we could see more of Tyler Algier and CPAT than like we really want to and then you have a healthy Kyle Pitts in here Drake London his second year an offense that ran plays at the sixth lowest rate last year as well I just can't take Bijan over Barkley so give me Saquon over Bijan in 2023 fantasy football drafts well, so to me, this is an argument between the known versus the unknown, right? And I think that's going to be a lot of people's crux when it comes to Bijan is, you know, they haven't seen it yet. And so they just can't, you know, take him as high as he's going. It's a lot of the arguments I've seen, you know, online on the World Wide Web. And, but when, he, when it comes to Bijan, like he is the best prospect we have seen come out since Saquon Barkley. Like he really is. Like he is the best prospect we have seen. The dude can absolutely do it all. You know, we've, we've talked a lot about Bijan this offseason. Had over almost 1,600 rushing yards, 314 receiving yards, and only 19 catches, I might add, which is pretty impressive. 18 rushing touchdowns last season. He was 11th in yards after contact per attempt. First in missed tackles forced. Third in missed tackles forced per attempt. Ninth in carries of 15-plus yards. And he now he gets to go to a team in the Falcons who averaged 32.9 carries per game, which was the highest rate in the league. And their 159.9 rushing yards per game was also the third highest rate in the league as well last year. And they did all this with fifth round pick Tyler Algier, Cordell Patterson, and Caleb Huntley. Now, this Falcons offensive line is 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 one of the best in the league. They were ranked last year fifth in adjusted line yards. They are PFF graded uh, number one offensive line in terms of run blocking and PFF seventh best offensive line heading into the 2023 season. This so he, get, he so that is definitely a feather in his cap in the situation here. Now, even more so, Arthur Smith is stuck in the 90s, right? He loves running the football. And a track record has has is is and Arthur Smith's track record, even before camp uh, to the Falcons during his stint with Tennessee, the Titans' rushing attack were top five in attempts, yards, and touchdowns in the two seasons that he was the offensive coordinator there. So, you know, his his running scheme is obviously super effective. We saw it even with, with the guys they had there last year. Now you enter a top ten pick. I just can't see Tyler Algier or Cordell Patterson having much of a role, if any, considering how much they just invested into B. John Robinson, right? They have to, they have to get him involved. Now, the argument could be, well, maybe he doesn't see as much pass catching work because his team really threw at one of the worst rates in the league last year. 
Now, a lot of that had to do with Marcus Mariota, who, who was there uh, under center. They, they did not throw the ball at all. Marcus Mariota was fucking awful last year. And so I, I do think with Desmond Ritter, they still have Taylor Heineke as a backup. So it doesn't work out with Ritter. They do have somebody that, that at least has proven that he can lead an NFL offense. And so I just think there, there's going to be a lot of targets here for B. John Robinson to get. And honestly, there's nobody else past. Once you get past Drake London and Kyle Pitts, and right now Kyle Pitts is tough to, tough to gauge because – I, it's starting to seem more and more likely that maybe he had more than just an MCL uh, last season because he still doesn't look right. Like, he should have been ready to go months ago. Like, and he's still out there. He's wearing this big old bulky brace and everything else. Like, just kind of, uh, I think they just got that off of him. But maybe there was more to that injury than what we know. And if that's the case, if he's going to have problems this year, like, like, there's nobody else to throw the ball to besides Drake London. And so, really, and I think of this offense, I think I do think it's it's very likely that you're going to see this offense uh, have some positive regression in terms of the, of the passing game. They're not going to throw the ball like 22 times a game again. I think they're going to be much more close to probably 30 pass steps a game. And where are those where are those volumes going to go to? We know Bijan Robinson is a fantastic pass catcher out of the backfield. The question is, is how much is there? Overall, when I look at Bijan Robinson, I see a player who's likely I think can easily hit. 13, 14, one of the best offensive lines in the league. He's going to be running behind. And so, and then from there, it's, it's really going to come down to touchdown volume, his, his receiving upside. I think the receiving upside is certainly there. I still think 60, 70 targets is well within the range of possibilities for him. And double digit, I think double digit touchdowns is also there for him as well. So it is extremely close between these two of these guys. If I had to make a decision, obviously I lean towards Bijan just because I, I think some of the other things here are more in his favor. And when it comes to Saquon, there are more weapons there this year. Like, I get it. Like, they're not, like, elite guys that are there. But Jalen Hyatt has really been popping in camp so far. There's been a lot of hype around Jalen Hyatt and what he's been able to do there. Wando Robinson's back. I mean, they have 47 slot-wide receivers. You know, Isaiah Hodgins, depending on what happens with him. And, you know, Darius Slayton's back. So, and, and then, obviously, Darren Waller. If Darren Waller can t- stay healthy, like, these are more options that they're going to be able to throw the football to. And so, you know, one of the one of the big question marks with Saquon Barkley heading into last season was Daniel Jones doesn't typically check down. Like, that's not what he, he typically does. But they really didn't have a choice to be able to do that because they had nobody else to throw the ball to. Everybody got hurt. And so, I do think there's the possibility that Saquon Barkley's pass catching upside is also going to be a little bit capped if some of these guys could pan out that you have here in the receiving room. So that's what would be my concern when it comes to this, that maybe uh, Saquon Barkley's uh, upside is a little bit capped there. Not to mention their offensive line is not still not very good. It's it's average at best, where you're talking about a top 10 run blocking unit, top five run blocking unit uh, in the Falcons. So that's where I came in on these two guys. I think I think you really can't go wrong on either one of them, but I just think Bijan uh, edges them out. Though I will say, I, and I'm almost positive in the comment section below, we're, I'm, I'm going to get crushed. Everyone's going to say there's no way you can take Bijan over Saquon, but I digress. Yeah, it's, it's it's super close. I think Bijan does deserve to go in the first round. I'm just going to – I feel more comfortable and confident in Barkley. I think, you know, you were saying with as far as, you know, Daniel Jones checking down, well, at least we saw him do it last year, right? Like maybe Barkley doesn't hit 76 targets like he had last year. But I don't see that falling off to, you know, 40 or anything like that, even with some of the other guys they have in the mix. I still think he is one of their most versatile weapons, super explosive. We saw him return back to, like, his rookie-ish, Penn State-ish type of form. I I just think for Bijan to finish over Barkley, you know, assuming health for both players, obviously, Bijan is going to have to have, like, a Derrick Henry in type of rushing production, which is obviously in the realm of possibility. Uh, but, you know, that dude is a certified freak. Last year, Nick Chubb had almost 1,700 scrimmage yards, 12 touchdowns, and he finished RB6 behind Barkley. If Bijan goes out and has those type of numbers like Nick Chubb does from last year, you're going to be ecstatic with that type of production, especially coming from a rookie. But like I said, the receiving profile in the and the upside, I don't see for Bijan year one anyway. Uh, so, anyways, let us know in the comment section below who you riding with. Uh, is it is it Bijan or are you going with Saquon? Let us know. Let us know why in the comment section below. We'll see you on the next one. Bye. Mm-hmm.